all mm -hmm. of Star Wars is just like, and what's that? Yeah. And what's <laughs> that? What are these? And what's that? <laughs> That's what we the have TV some, show We was? have something to do. There's a big war going on. <laughs> Joining us today, we have Zach Oyama. Hi, I'm a uh, one-time I'm Actually champion. Very good. Mm -hmm. And Allie Beardsley. Hello, I'm also one time I'm actually champion. And Jessica Ross. Hello, I've never been invited before. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. You two have played before. Jess, you haven't. The rules are very simple. I have here a stack of false statements about franchises you know and love. It's up to you to find the thing that's wrong with it and correct me. Uh, the only two rules are you have to proceed your corrections with um actually. If you don't, I won't give you the point. And you can interrupt me whenever you want the moment you spot something that's wrong. Are you guys ready to get started? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. And grab your bells and we'll get started. <laughs> no! <laughs> In Star Trek The Next Generation, the crew of the USS Enterprise is a diverse group of humans and non-humans. And those from Earth come from a variety of different countries. Captain Picard is from England, Will Riker grew up in Alaska, and Geordi LaForge was born in Somalia. Allie. Um, actually, mm -hmm. he was not born in Alaska. He did grow up in Alaska. Yeah. Um, actually, LaForge is not from Earth. No, he is actually from Somalia. Yeah, Seems yeah. interesting. Yes. Um, actually, <laughs> he's not from London. I said England, but that is correct. Oh, yay! <laughs> yeah, we kind of like knocked through a lot of the other ones. There could have nice. been something else wrong, but yeah, I mean, his name is Jean-Luc Picard. Uh, oh, he's, yeah, fuck. He's from France. It's explained in the series that he speaks English because at this point in history, in the 24th century, French has become an obscure language that no that no one speaks, so they That's all speak so English there. France, France is now England. Yeah, which is like, that's the least believable thing about Star Trek ever, right? That, that's, that France would be why? like, we can speak English now, we have no problem with oh that. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> it also just feels like you're just, they're just creating work for themselves. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Just be from England. Yeah, someone yeah. could be named John Luke and be born yeah. in England. No, 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 that's crazy. No, but France is England now. <laughs> Uh, that is a point for Jess. Nice. Awesome. I really thought I was going to get none. And then here I am right <laughs> at the gate. I'm like, oh. winning this. Well, you, you're yeah. demolishing everyone and else. You guys look like idiots. Because I just price is right at $1 to answer. <laughs> The movie Predator, aside from being generally cool, is notable in other ways. It was number one at the box office its opening weekend, won an Academy Award for visual effects, and has the notable privilege of being the only movie to feature two future governors, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jesse Ventura. Allie. Um, actually, I don't want to watch this and you're my babysitter. <laughs> um, actually, it did not uh, <laughs> get first in the box office opening week. It did. Um, actually, another movie had two governors. There are actually two other movies that feature uh, two future governors, and they're the same two people. It's still Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jesse Ventura. They were both in The Running Man, uh, and they were- Oh, yes! Yeah. Yes! Uh, and they were both in Batman and Robin. Oh! Uh, so, Wait, who is he in Batman and Robin? Uh, Jesse Ventura plays a guard at, at Arkham. Oh! Uh, fuck! So the, that is the, the noble filmography of our dual governor movies. So the they're Predator, just, Batman and Robin, and The Running Man. So they're just buds. That's what I, that I is. Guess. <laughs> He's yeah, just I guess. like, Arnold's just like, Getting his buddy Jesse Ventura in the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's that crafty with Jesse Ventura. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, really? Pop chips again? <laughs> it's low calorie. Yeah. Low calorie. Low calorie. calorie. <laughs> <laughs> I have to swallow so much air. All right, we're going to go on to our next statement here. Though we see Ewoks earlier in Return of the Jedi, we don't actually hear the word Ewok until C3PO encounters them and is able to translate the Ewokies. You don't hear them say Ewok till the TV show. That's correct, yeah. Um, actually, you, you don't hear them oh, say Ewok oh, oh, the TV show. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> oh, this goddamn game. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten soft. <laughs> That's correct, yeah. They, yeah. Ne they never say the word Ewok in the movie itself. Uh, it's not until the end credits that you see the word Ewok on the screen. They never said aloud until the um, until TV show. What do they say? No one ever says, like, this is an what Ewok. Is that? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no one, weirdly, no one ever is like, what the fuck is that thing? Uh, I'm question. sorry, what are these things trying yeah. to eat what? me? Yeah. All of Star Wars is just like, and what's that? Yeah. And what's and that? that? What are these? And what's that? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we the TV some, show We have was? something to do. There's a big war going on. Well, mm -hmm. space is crazy. 
crazy. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> it doesn't matter what it's called, all right? There's like a big intergalactic kind of like battle thing going and on this? here. <laughs> like well, tourists on this that. planet, they're <laughs> taking <laughs> pictures. Well, that is a point for Allie, because Zach, you didn't say I'm um, actually. I know. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> the, it's the one thing I you have to do. I remember it happened moments yes. ago. And I've yeah, never I seen Star yeah. Wars. Do you want to... <laughs> <laughs> this brings us to our shiny question for the game. Now, shiny questions are just like shiny Pokemon, just a little bit different, a little bit rarer, worth the same number of points. This is a game we're going to call Find the Fake. Find the Fake. Just a moment, we're going to put up six images on the screen. It's up to you to find the one that does not belong. Take a look. These are Digimon. Uh, I'm actually, this is not. That's incorrect. Fuck. Allie. I'm actually, this one is not a Digimon. That is incorrect. Fuck! Um, I'm actually, this is not a Digimon. That's incorrect. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, act uh, I'm actually, uh, this is not one? That's incorrect. <laughs> uh, I'm actually, this is not a Digimon. You have guessed all of the- oh, oh, I'm actually, this is not one! I'm actually, I'm actually no, you, you literally guessed all the real Digimon <laughs> before you found the fake one there. Yeah, the goat with the wings, that is you just know, honestly, something we- You know, honestly, that's on us. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it's not. Yeah. It's not on us. <laughs> this I, is like a Simpsons character. This is a just a man's head with legs. This is Legos. That's Legos. This is this looks like the most normal this thing. This is a back to school, but also like a real monster's sex toy. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? So Digimon is anything. <laughs> Digimon is Digimon is a state of mind, bro. <laughs> Today, we most frequently picture Dracula as depicted by Bela Lugosi, a pale, slick-haired, well-dressed man with sharp incisors and a red silk cape. However, in Bram Stoker's original book, Dracula, he's described as looking much more like the vampire's appearance in Nosferatu, an ugly, rat-toothed man with long, gnarled fingers and pointy ears. Zach. Um, actually, in Bram uh, Stoker's Dracula, he's just a weird old man. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, there are some things here, but but the way Dracula is described in Bram Stoker's book is like, what the fuck is going on here? Bram Stoker describes. A tall, old man, clean-shaven save for a long, white mustache, and clad in black from head to foot, without a single speck of color about him anywhere. What? Yeah. So come in. Dracula. A long, Dracula. white mustache? Dracula has a long, white mustache in the book. Is that like a Fu Manchu? Kind of like bushy, kind of like... Kind of like sticking out. I feel like I've seen Romanian smoke. soldier pictures, uh -huh. and they have like a similar mustache. Yeah, Were I you think on it, Pinterest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's got a Romanian soldier board. Fall's like, coming up, and I'm just trying to figure out who I'm going to be this fall. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one point for Zach. Woo! And so much more. I'm for on Zach. the board. See ya, bagel. <laughs> <laughs> it's about Batman. Finally! Finally. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> While Batman the Animated Series is consistently ranked as one of the greatest animated series ever made, it's also the most expensive animated series on a per episode basis, due solely from the sheer amount of black ink used in every episode. Um, actually, it wasn't solely per the black ink. It was uh, per the rights of Batman and the, <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> characters. And stuff. Uh, no, no, good guess, but no. Um, actually, it wasn't the most expensive show. It wasn't. One there, point. There, there, <laughs> there, Next there, question. Uh, <laughs> there's kind of like multiple things wrong here. There's one kind of like big thing, but it is true that like I kind of pulled it out of my ass. It's not the most expensive. Yucky. But um, oh. <laughs> yucky. <laughs> um, actually, it was really expensive because they. The voices that they got were so, they used a lot of expensive voice acts. Nope, nope. I'll give it to Jess for, for finding at least like one of the things that's, that's wrong with it. Um, it. Batman the Animated Series was actually animated on black paper. Uh, and so like all the black that's in there is the paper and then all the uh, white and all the other colors were painted on. So it was like sort of animated in like in, in a reverse style, um, which is how it has that like, kind of like dark look. Does that make it expensive or that's No, just it has nothing that. to do with the expense. The expense what? I just sort of like, I don't yeah, know. <laughs> <laughs> this brings us to our final question of the game. Wow. Which, as always, concerns real life skills. Life skills! Cast iron cookware is valued for its durability and even heating, but requires a certain amount of maintenance. It's important to wash your pan with soap and water. Oh. Um, actually. No! Um, no. <clears throat> I think I did. Okay. Allie? Um, actually. It's important to never use soap on your cast iron <laughs> skillet. 
You can use water if you want, and then you have to retreat it with oil, salt, and pepper and heat it up. That is correct. Yeah, yeah. my dad's a chef, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Don't put soap on your cast iron cooker. Is that what you're gonna say? Yes! Yeah! <laughs> You sure all knew a lot about cast iron cookware. <laughs> you did? You oh, did? no, I did. I knew you don't put soap. Don't put soap. Don't yeah. do it. You'll lose, lose that seasoning. <laughs> Jess is our winner with three points. Yay. Now, we're not perfect here either, and we make mistakes too. If you notice something that we got wrong, you can correct us by tweeting at um actually show. Might even give you a point. And here's some things that we got wrong in the last episode. At O oh, Stew This says, Um, actually, the kingdom in the Phantom Toll Booth is called the Kingdom of Wisdom. Rhyme and reason are the names of the two princesses, not the place. That's correct. At Josset Stern says, Um, actually, you listed wyverns as a kind of dragon, but in the Dungeons and Dragons monster manuals going all the way back to AD&D, it is very clear that wyverns are not dragons and are more closely related to lizards and drakes. To those of you who pointed this out, no points awarded. While wyverns might be distinct from dragons in several properties, it is also just as true to say that wyverns are a kind of dragon. At Owen CHR says, Um, actually, coconut oil vegetable is in its solid form at room temperature below 24 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is technically true, although it is liquid at a higher temperature than that. I will award you one half of a point. Thank you again for watching. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um, actually. Hi, it's Mike Trapp from College Humor. Click here to subscribe, click here for more fun things, and send help to keep me from sinking. Please, please help, please help.